Hey, fellas, when a woman tries to tell you that she's celibate, she's using that as a manipulation tactic to try to use you and manipulate you. If a woman is not a virgin, don't fall for that BS. When she was in her prime years, just giving her a box away to any man, she didn't make them wait. So why should you have to wait? And women that normally do this, especially like women in their late 30s, 40s, and 50s, they use this tactic because they know they hit a wall and they know no men that value themselves are going to take them serious. If it's a man that she really likes and she's very attractive to him, she's not going to make him wait. She's not going to scream celibacy. That celibacy going to go out the window. Stay woke. So as more and more women speak out about wanting to be celibate and the 4B movement and overall wanting to take their bodies and their powers back from men, I see more of these men rising up out of nowhere to try to tear us women down. Now, as an older woman, you might say, why should we care? But these videos are not for the older and wiser women. These videos are for the younger women, those late teens and early 20s. Lord knows I needed these types of advice when I was that age. Do not let a man try to belittle or shame you for wanting to place value on your life, what's between your legs, or for choosing to have and uphold any boundary that you think will benefit your life. The men who find a problem with your boundaries already had no intentions of doing right by you. So for today's topic, let's explore celibacy, abstinence, and how it can benefit our lives. So I posted a video yesterday about what happens to women when they're celibate for too long. And I noticed this like recurring theme in the comments of why women were celibate. And so I wanted to talk about what happens when you're celibate for the wrong reasons and what that looks like. So before I get into this, I just want to say that I know the difference between celibacy and abstinence, okay? I'm not confused. I'm using the term celibacy because it is more palatable since that's what people think celibacy is. But most of us are abstaining from sex. Okay, so I've been intentionally celibate twice in my life. And the first time I did it was because I suffer from severe DV trauma, like ever since childhood and into my adult relationships and all of those things. And I had a situation happen to me where um, it just made me feel very unprotected by men. And I was like, nah, I, no one's going to touch me. Like at this point, I'm sharing myself with people who no longer make me feel safe. And now I have to protect myself. And the only way that I can protect myself is to just not let anyone touch me so I stopped talking to men completely I cut off all my hair I did a very like you're not gonna do this and it pushed me into this very hyper masculine space which was incredibly unhealthy in my opinion to step into celibacy or abstinence in a space of um, trauma where you're doing it because you know it, not because your intention is to grow from the experience or to work through your issues in that experience. It dictates the way that you have that experience. Like, I really believe that as human beings, in order to have a fulfilling life, there has to be some type of pleasure. And intimacy is a pleasure, you know? I wasn't even letting people, like, hug me or touch me or anything like that. I was very, like, just, I have the ick, stay away from me, yada yada, you know? So I'm gonna tell you guys eight reasons why I decided to be celibate last year. One, I just had anxiety through the roof when it came to dating. I was like constantly waiting for a text message waiting for someone to make a plan wondering what someone thought about me overthinking every text every situation like ruminating on social media and it was just really unhealthy dating just had my nervous system in a constant state of fight or flight two i was stuck in a pattern and what my pattern looked like was i would meet someone who i didn't like that much which would cause them to start pursuing me and i would entertain it and then we would kind of, you know, be dating or hanging out. And then eventually they would start to maybe pull away or like I would feel like they were disengaging. And then that would make me start to become obsessive. Just started this endless loop of a cat or mouse chase because I would be chasing and eventually I would get sick of it. So I would pull back a little and that would cause them to chase me and... I now understand that it's because we were just two emotionally unavailable people. We didn't actually like or want the other person. 
We just needed the validation. Three, all of this ties into the fact that I had really low self-worth. I understand that we are all the creators of our own realities and something within me kept magnetizing these bad experiences. Or I was so uncomfortable being alone. Like I could not stand to spend one weekend night at home alone at my house. And this extended to friendships too. Like at one point I just looked up and I found myself surrounded by so many fake friends because I just so desperately needed to always be out of the house always be kind of distracted by things to do and parties to go to and realizing that I just couldn't stand to be alone and that this was probably part of why dating was just not fun I was dating for like almost survival instead of enjoying I've with all of this in mind the amount of energy that dating was draining from me was obviously taking energy away from my work and my creative endeavors six I was really stuck in a men are trash mindset and I could see that the world around me was reflecting trash men back to me I knew I had to shift that mindset before the world around me could look and feel different and good men could start showing up in my life and lastly seven I knew that I wanted to be in love again like my next experience with a man I want to be truly loving and caring and what was showing up in my life was just like lust and infatuation so I knew that I needed a reset too many times I'm hearing I'm in a talking stage for five months and this is why I say and why I've learned ladies stop men who are not taking you out a lot of women a lot of women Try and delude themselves into thinking that hooking up in the beginning when you're first getting to know someone is no big deal. Think that in your mind all you want, but to men, it is though. Women, if you're using your outlook and standards as a woman, your psychology to place standards onto men of, well, I do this so it shouldn't, you're going to lose every time. How the f*** are you in a talking stage with an adult for what does that even mean when you're an adult? So that means you're probably treating him like he's your boyfriend, him doing nice shit for him, and he's not committing to you. Why? Because in the beginning you thought it was you could have sex with no commitment. Stop it. Ladies, tell a man you're celibate until marriage and watch how funny he get with you. I was waiting for somebody to come out with this comment because I told my friend this about five or six years ago. She said, well, I don't know if you really like me or this, this, that. I said, tell me you're celibate until marriage. And watch, give it a week to a month. And still, hey, you want to go out on a date and this, this, that? Because when some people spend money and they realize that, oh, I'm not going to get any sexual benefit from this, they will get real funny with you. Now, this is not all. This is some, obviously. But watch, you will quickly, within a month, know, ooh, this person really does not actually like me. They want what I can give them in that kind of way. Because some men will actually want to get to know you. Oh, okay, you, you're celebrating as a marriage? Well, I respect that. Hey, you want to get to know each other? Maybe we can date for marriage. And that's cool. That's that's perfectly fine. But then you got some others that will sit there and be like, ooh, well... I can go find something else. And then you know. Stay blessed. Being celibate as a woman is a choice. I'm sure that if you wanted to, you could find somebody to sleep with tonight very, very easily. But women who choose to be celibate are not doing it because they can't. They're doing it because they're protecting their energy. And it's come to a point where it is just much more rewarding to wait for that right person than to sleep around. It just doesn't feel good, especially if you're on a spiritual journey and a healing journey. Now, don't get me wrong. It is very empowering to be celibate. It feels good. You're not sharing your energy with anyone toxic, but it comes to a point where you crave sensual, genuine intimacy and connection. And the fact that we have to choose celibacy because these men don't make us feel safe enough to be our sensual selves, it's kind of sad to me. It's kind of sad. For me, my, my love language is physical touch, but I'm very particular with the way I let touch me. The fact that I feel like I need to be celibate because I feel like... You know, I don't want to be, 
I, I'm afraid to be screwed over. I'm afraid that they'll leave or, or they won't take me seriously. I want to build a real connection. I don't want to just do things without a deeper connection. I kind of find it sad that the men of today don't know how to make women feel safe enough to let their guard down. It's very easy to do. But I'm saying in a genuine way, not in a player type of way. Not in a way where it's fake love bombing and then they disappear right after. Like a real... But I don't know who, if anyone is even looking for anything real anymore. Also, I want to say, if you're on a celibacy journey and you do end up, you know, being intimate with someone, don't feel guilty after that. You are human, you are sensual, and you are just craving affection. And that's okay. Because that's our natural state. We're human. I love you guys. So let's talk about this because this is a very common thing within the celibate journey where a woman has to decide, should I break celibacy? Should I have sex? I'm really yearning for it. I'm really desiring it, but I just don't know when the right time and I don't want to break my celibacy because then I mean I'm not pure anymore. What we have to stop doing is using this celibate journey as a gateway to guilt and shame. Celibacy is not a gateway to perfectionism because perfectionism is never what you're going to achieve. And not only that, any healing journey that you go on is never going to go exactly as planned. When you go into your celibate journey, your celibate journey is simply about self-improvement. It's simply about going within and doing the intentional work. And when you feel like, okay, I've done the work, I think I'm here, I'm ready to start exploring my sexuality. I'm really desiring it. I'm really yearning for it. Then go out there and get it. A part of exercising your sovereignty and being empowered within yourself as a woman is knowing when to make these kinds of decisions. You are not more of a saint because you didn't have sex and you are not less of a saint because you did have sex in the end of the day when it comes down to making that kind of decision it takes a sovereign and empowered woman to truly make that kind of decision for herself the reason why a lot of people do not enjoy their celibacy is because they place these rigid rules and high expectations on their celibacy they compare their journey to my journey or that person journey and you have to understand the celibate journey is a creative journey it is your journey to create it is your moment and it is your time However that journey looks like for you is a-okay because healing is chaotic and when it comes down to being sovereign, being empowered, it's about embracing that chaos. It's about embracing all aspects of who you are as a person. Not just the aspects of you that is deemed as perfect or acceptable in society, it's accepting all all of you within this celibate journey. That choice is completely up to you. And the way that you enjoy your celibacy is actually being so honest and real with yourself about what you're desiring and craving. And also not being so strict with yourself, not being so rigid with yourself. Have fun, be liberated, exercise your freedom. In the end of the day, this celibate journey is not about achieving perfectionism. Celibacy is not a gateway to adopting these strict purity rules. It's not a gateway to guilt and shame. It's simply a gateway to knowing who you are at a much more deeper and intentional level. When it comes down to making these kind of decisions for yourself where you're really one to explore your sexuality, no one can make that decision except for you. When you choose celibacy, you are choosing self-discipline. You are choosing peace. You are choosing clarity. And yes, you end up getting closer and closer to God. You end up having a higher vibrational frequency that not only you notice, but other people around you notice it as well. Sexual energy exchange is a very, very real thing. And it can be very powerful. And it can also be extremely destructive to your health, to your mental health, but above all, to your spiritual health. Choosing to abstain, choosing celibacy would be the best decision that you could ever make for yourself. For me personally, I am 18 months on the celibacy train and it has provided me with so much peace, so much happiness, so much energy, so much clarity, a lot more of a high vibrational frequency, a lot more knowledge, a lot more understanding, 
a lot more closer in my relationship with God, a lot more self-discipline, self-awareness, self-respect, self-worth. I have seen a huge improvement within myself and I look around at other people that have also made this choice, choosing to remain celibate. And what that also means is not dating, no desire to date, basically focusing on yourself, on your journey, on your healing and completely detaching from all soul ties from your past you will start to see a transformation within yourself. Physically, your appearance, you'll start to glow. You'll start looking brighter. You'll start feeling lighter. There is no dense energy weighing heavy on your shoulders. You are more focused on your goals. You are a lot more focused on your relationship with Christ. There is nothing clouding your judgment. There is nothing fogging up that clarity within you. In fact, when you remain celibate, you gain such a profound clarity within yourself. So I cannot promote celibacy enough. It is the best decision that you will ever make. Each to their own, but sexual energy exchange, it can cause so many problems. If you are not married, if you don't have a husband or a wife and you are just casually exchanging your sexual energy with different partners or with that one partner and you have no idea how many partners that particular partner has had, you are really putting yourself at risk. You'll end up with serious depression, a lot of anxiety, your emotions are all fogged up, your clarity is all fogged up, your judgment is all fogged up. You end up in a very, very dense, dark place within your spirituality as well, lack of spiritual growth. You're putting your physical health in, in harm's way. There's a lot that can go wrong with that. You have to be very choosy and very careful who you give your sexual energy to. It's a gift and it should be treated as sacred. Celibacy is the way. I'm telling you guys. Trust me. Abstaining from sex helps me discern who is and who isn't for me in my dating season. I've been absent now for almost four years and I'm so proud of that. And through this, I've really seen who is and who isn't for me in the dating pool. Before, I would just kind of let men linger because we had a connection or we've kissed and we've done this and we've had sex and everything else. So it's like we have this like ongoing situationship going. We might as well keep going. No, baby. Since abstaining, I don't play. Like, I genuinely do not play. Like, I can tell within the first 45 minutes of that date if there will be a second date. And I'll be honest with you, nine times out of ten, there isn't a second date. Because you can really see where people's heads are when yours isn't in the clouds. It's not just about attraction or the simple fact of you both being believers anymore. No. Are you guys on the same path? Is he on fire for God like you're on fire for God? How does he treat his family? How does he treat his best friends? Does he have community? Like there are a lot of things that factor in now that I pay attention to that I did not pay attention to back then. Physical connection and attraction can be so blinding if you're not sharp in wisdom with the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you what, there are a lot of great men out there. There really are. But just because you're a great man and I'm a great woman does not mean that we are a match for each other. That's another thing that I would have been blinded about before if I had opened the door to us having sex and having those connections beforehand. When you're abstinent, you realize how powerful sex is and you realize how valuable you are as a woman, as God's daughter, and how you don't think anybody deserves your body outside of your husband. It's hard to explain if you haven't actually taken the journey, but the truth is sex is so powerful and it is so important and it is so special that you really don't want to give it to anybody who doesn't deserve it and I'll be honest with you I've made mistakes on my celibacy journey I have literally been celibate for a year two years slipped up and regretted it immediately because I realized once again this person does not deserve me the grass is not greener on the other side it's greener when you're abstinent and when you're focusing on God
And some people think that there's no man that's going to put up with that. That's complete delusion. The truth is there's somebody out there for everybody. And there are many, 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 many men who are going to respect and value your abstinence journey, not try to pressure it because the truth is they honor God. They see you, they honor the Lord and they trust that. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Have you ever been celibate or abstinent? How did it benefit or affect your life? Thank you so much for watching as usual and I'll see you in my next video.